Well, as you guys will see in this video, I made a very, very good attempt at saving this thing and uh, seeing how far I could get with it. I also forgot to put this screen back on to the starter recoil. Not a big deal. Uh, definitely not the biggest deal out of all this, but unfortunately the gas tank is cracked. So it's not really worth going any further with this. However, I do have a ton of footage on this. And just being the fact that I got it to fire up, um, you guys are going to enjoy that for what it is. But these gas tanks, I don't think I have another one of these on hand. I may be able to swap one from a newer Briggs & Stratton. But I seem to remember trying that some point in the past and it not really working. Well, so this is a really old... Murray 24 inch or 21 inch lawnmower and it's in need of some service and like I said it is fairly old it's a 1988 looks like it's been left outside for a while I have no idea if the motor in this thing is good or not looks like we have a manual choke which does appear to move but we won't know that for sure until we get the cover off and look at it. But we also have a seized up blade cable. As well as a seized up pull cord. So we're going to have to get into this thing a little bit more than usual. So I got the pull cord guard off. Now we're just going to remove the tank. Which there's these three bolts up top. Then there should be another larger one on the side. And I'll take that cover off. We'll blow out the air filter. Not a big deal there. But we'll take off all of this here in a minute, but first what we need to do, like I said, is take the gas tank off. All right. So we still have the fuel line that's connected. Get some pliers and remove that. This thing is really dirty under here. Like I said, this is absolutely filthy. I'm going to get the vacuum ready. Next step is to take the recoil off. All right, cords out, and it appears that it's completely locked up. So we'll see if we can save this. seen a lawnmower that's this trashed before with dirt and spider webs. This thing might not be worth it. So the recoil itself functions, but the problem here, very likely, with the blade brake. The whole brake assembly that goes against the flywheel is completely rusted up, seized solid. It's almost like this lawnmower was at the bottom of a lake for a while. We'll continue taking her apart, seeing how far we can go with it. But I'm not really expecting a miracle here with this one. We're going to take the ratchet off too. You know what? I'm just going to take the whole flywheel off. No, 
nice. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of messing with these. Beat the crap out of these trying to get them off and they'll end up breaking things. But the shaft is actually in pretty good condition. We're gonna vacuum all this out though. We're gonna have to undo the blade brake. See if we can pull this out. Like I said, I'm not expecting any miracles with this thing. And we might have to end up jury rigging something here. Now, as logic would have it, wow, it's actually got a lot of compression in it, but we're still going to pull this off, and so of course, now's the part where you got to be really careful or else you can very easily break something. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tension onto my claw here. And give it a couple whacks. And there you have it. That actually came off pretty easily compared to how some of these are in the past. All right. How dirty that is. I saw that black widow just hanging out underneath the flywheel there. Dispatched her right quick. So now all we have to do is put the rest of this back together and then we're going to start on the carburetor and clean it out. Let you guys know what the results on that. Well, so I decided to remove the whole blade brake unit. So it's not perfect and I think it goes without saying and as you guys saw in the beginning of this video I'm not going to be selling this to anybody. Um, I just don't think I could in good conscious, conscience sell anybody a mower that's in really this bad a shape. And plus with me disabling the safety on it, that's eh, kind of don't really want to uh, deal with the hassle. But one thing I am going to do, I can get this off, is I'm also going to clean the magneto up and uh, you know just get some of that corrosion off of it and see what we can do. This thing needs a lot of work. Alright so I just cleaned up the magneto and what I'm going to do now is just put this sheet of stickers and that's going to hopefully give us a proper gap. Honestly you're supposed to use a business card but this will be perfectly fine for our purposes. Now we're going to have to see if we're making spark. And I'll show you guys how to do that. It just involves removing the spark plug and grounding it out up against the side of the, side of the deck or the motor. So I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this. But I'm going to rotate the engine. And it's sparking. Like I said, I have no idea if you guys can see that or not. I did decide to put a good use spark plug in. So now just to throw her all back together, and then I'll meet you guys with the carburetor. All right, so at the workbench. And these particular carburetors do not have the hole inside of the bolt. like we got a 
Yeah, that's water. So, start pulling this apart. Pull the float pan out and the float. Needle looks to be in good shape. The float, surprisingly, other than being discolored, I don't see any cracks or damage in it. Damage to it, I should say. So I think we'll keep this. I'm not hearing anything inside it either when I shake it close to my ear. But the rest of this, however, is in need of a quick blow. Quick blow, quick cleaning with some carb spray, and we'll throw her all back together. So I spilled a little bit of gas all over the deck, but that's okay. I did check the oil, but I'm going to check it again. I have not tried to start this thing yet. The oil is at the proper level. I'll worry about changing it if this thing decides to run for us or not. So, just a quick recap. I disabled the blade brake, removed it completely, wasn't worth fixing. Thing is completely seized solid, so that's garbage. I think even the friction material on this brake shoe is worn down almost completely as well, so. I have no idea what's going to happen. I am going to have to actuate the throttle and uh, choke manually. I have not shot any carburetor spray into the carburetor to help start it, but we'll see what happens. Well, that's promising. This thing uh, definitely could use a manual throttle control on it. Because just with it wanting to run, it keeps shooting the uh, throttle back. So we're going to have to deal with that somehow. I don't think it'll be too difficult, but we'll see what we can do. So of course, when you're working with old junk like this, you run into issues with old plastics breaking. So, as I was trying to install the manual throttle, which I did find one, it broke off the little tab here, so I can no longer fish the wire for the controller in. So what I'm going to do instead, temporarily, until I can figure out if I can replace one of these or not, which you probably can, I'm just going to lock this thing in place, the pair of vice grips, so we can at least test and make sure that it's going to run properly. And it seems to want to kick off the choke anyways once it starts running. So it'll back itself up up against the vice grips and we should be okay. like that. It's kind of funny. So it runs okay, but we got a fuel leak coming from somewhere. I don't know where it's actually leaking from. It's probably leaking out of there. Maybe, I don't know. 
anyways. So this thing runs, seems to run okay. I'm kind of happy with that. I don't think I'd sell this thing on to anybody else, but the fact that it runs and probably will cut fine should be okay for out here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more.